Hey guys, how's it going? I wanted to hop on here really quick before we get into the actual video and clarify on something just really quickly. I've had quite a few messages since I announced my partnership with Monrovia asking what does that mean? And so I'm on here to clarify. So what that means now is Monrovia and I are working together and they're going to be sending me plants. I'll send them a list of plants that I want, would like to have in my garden, and they're gonna try to make that happen. And then they are also paying me. So now Monrovia is helping out on my channel. They're paying me to be able to continue to create videos, which means that my channel is no longer costing me money, <laughs> which is absolutely fabulous. So I wanted to say thank you guys to all of you who have been here and helped support it and made it so that that has officially happened. I hope that you guys understand how much goes on behind the scenes. I'm spending probably close to about 70 hours a week producing these YouTube videos. On top of my normal job that I work three days there and those are about mm, probably nine hour shifts. So I'm working a lot right now. I'm exhausted and this is going to make it so I don't feel so exhausted and I don't have to work so hard anymore, which is really, really nice. So shout out to Monrovia for making it so that this is possible and shout out to all of you guys for making it so that this is possible and this is happening. And so there's full transparency. I am getting paid by Monrovia to create these videos. And another question that I have been getting to is, am I going to be using other brands on my videos now? No just out of respect for what Monrovia is doing for me, I won't be doing that. So um, you guys might see, you know, some just like plain black cans that are unbranded plants or things like that. And I just am probably not going to go into depth talking about other brands. So I hope that you guys understand and I really appreciate you guys being here. Let's get into today's video. Hey guys, how's it going? It is a beautiful day out. We just had all these crazy rainstorms and uh, they've let up. So I'm able to get outside now. I wasn't able to get outside yesterday and so I'm really excited to get out now. It's gonna be a good one. I got some stuff I gotta get planted, some stuff I'm excited to get in the ground. I haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna plant, but I gotta get something in the ground. So I think my plan for today is to do a little bit of planting, move the bird bath, and then you guys, my seedlings have been outside. They're not happy with me. They've been outside. It's, they were outside, it rained, <laughs> and they've been sitting in water. <laughs> so they're still alive and they're still doing great. And they're obviously hardened off now because um, they're doing great. So I gotta take care of the seedlings first because they're full of water and I don't want them to get root rot. So let's take care of that because all those trays, it's bad. And then I'll show you guys what I wanna plant, where I wanna plant it. And then we're gonna finally move the bird bath right here because uh, <laughs> I said I was gonna do it and I didn't do it because <laughs> that's who I am as a person. <laughs> so these are my seedlings and look at this. First scabiosa of the year. It's so pretty, it's all white. I love it. She's gorgeous, very happy with that. I still wasn't planning on planting any of these, but that's okay. And then these are the seedlings that need to, <laughs> look at this, full of water. Full of water. <laughs> they're all full of water. So we gotta take care of this because they're not gonna be happy very long. Oh, this poor sunflower hasn't been able to grow. Oh, come on. Okay, the seed should have let go a while ago and it didn't. There we go. Now you can grow, little guy. the roots on this corn. That was amazing. That was so cool. They're so healthy. Those have to get planted ASAP. I'm just waiting to do a few more things in the veggie garden to get it done. But oh my gosh, they're so healthy. I owe everything to Bootstrap because um, I wouldn't have had the colorful six cells and all of those without that. So oh my gosh, that was so cool to see that. 
I hadn't paid attention to the roots. I haven't even lifted those up at all. I pretty much, when I water, I just lift up one of these, and it wasn't even these ones, where I would just scoot them to the side and I would just water just like that. So I didn't even pay attention to what was happening underneath. So that was really cool to see. And then this is the area I want to plant in, even though it just started raining out of nowhere. We've had clearish, well, we've had overcast all day, but I didn't think it was supposed to rain. But this is the area I want to plant in. I want to get something planted here, and I want to show you guys this too. That slug and bug that I used, you can see. This one had the damage, and these ones started to have it, and since I sprinkled that stuff down, there's been zero damage. So, this stuff, lifesaver, highly recommend it. Um, it keeps the hostas alive. <laughs> and I've got the other one over here with very little slug damage also. That one, not doing great, but I think it's because it didn't stay wet, where these ones all stayed really wet. Well, it just started raining, kind of out of nowhere. The clouds haven't changed at all, so I don't know what's up with that. So uh, I guess I'll be back outside in two seconds. But actually, let me show you guys the other hostas that we did plant up because those are looking really good. Look at these hostas. They're huge. I mean, this one was teeny tiny. There was nothing even coming out when we planted it. So that is fabulous. And that ties in so perfectly with those. I mean, killer combination. It looks like the rain's not letting up. We had no rain all morning. I was like, cool, I'll get out in the afternoon. Did not get out in the afternoon. It's now, well, the afternoon. It's now three o'clock. I went inside, waited for an hour. It's still raining. <laughs> but I threw my rain jacket on and I'm just gonna go for it. I'm gonna brave it. And remember, baby steps, okay? Not big steps, baby steps. Not a Red Bull. Just saying, not a Red Bull. I'm, I'm doing a Pepsi today. A little bit of caffeine, and we're calling it good. So, <laughs> uh, let's go see what we have up front. Let's go see what we can get planted. <laughs> I lied. Let's move the fountain, bird bath, whatever it's called, um, really quickly. Oh, okay, my tripod. <laughs> you guys, I break probably four tripods in a year. This one, this thing's broken and I broke the handle off of it, and it's lopsided. I, I go through a lot of tripods. <laughs> Anyways, let's move the bird bath. We're gonna move it forward by a lot. I've got this gap back here. So I'm basically gonna push it so it's totally right here, up against this. That way I can get ready for when I find something to go here. And this is a really tall wall, so I'm thinking that that trellis that I have on the other side that I have that evergreen clematis growing on, I might put another one right here and it'll be huge, big, and then I can just grow something easy up at like a clematis. I think that that would be really pretty. So let's get this bird bath moved forward and then we can go from there. to clean it. It's so gross. This is what I'm gonna use. It's this like brush thingy. I get it off of Amazon. I'll link it down below and a drill cleans it so well. look at that. <laughs> I think that's gonna be a lot better. I think that's gonna give us planting space back here. I tucked it as close to the hydrangea as I could get it. It's nice and level now. It was super unlevel before so this is way better and it's gonna make for the trellis to be fabulous right there. That'll be so nice. 
can't wait to get that done. Um, I just think it's gonna be great. And then I'll have all of this room for planting. It makes it so I have so much planting room in this one bed where I really thought it was pretty much full. Obviously I was wrong. <laughs> So let's go see what we can find for this bed that I have already here on the property. My dilemma is that part of this is shade. It's like a triangle. This is full sun for sure. Um, but then it's like kind of shade, but then also sun. I know that the tips of the hydrangea right there do burn just a tad bit. So I got, I got to find something that can handle sun and shade. I don't even know what I have. I've got a massive stockpile right now of plants. So let's see what we can find for this area. <laughs> so we've seen the horde of plants. We've kind of quickly gone over it and I will go in depth of everything more as I start getting these things planted, specifically those sunflowers that I'm the most excited to plant. But this is what I'm thinking I'm gonna plant over there to add some color. Cause all I have in that bed is hostas and um, I have a hydrangea that blooms white. Which, so it's the Monrovia Glacier Bay, um, it's their Seaside Serenade collection. And so it's a really pretty hydrangea. It's supposed to do better in my growing zone. And I had got my hands on it. So I got that planted already in there. It's established. And then I think I'm going to go with this. It's called Itsy Bitsy Peach Miniature Rose. And you guys know, I love that color. And you guys, I didn't realize that I talk about roses so much <laughs> until a few of you have pointed out how much I like roses. And I mean, it makes sense. I love roses. So Monrovia had sent out a couple roses. This is the smallest one that they sent out. And you guys, anyone can grow this. 18 inches tall, 24 feet wide. 24 inches wide, not 24 feet. Oh my gosh. Um, zones four through nine. Super beautiful, abundant blooms. This one's supposed to just like continuously bloom. And um, it's got like these little, they're small flowers. They're not huge flowers. I mean, they're decent size. You can see the buds right here. I mean, this is a pretty big bud. So it's it should just bloom continuously. And roses do really well here. And this, I think, will be perfect on the border. And it's resistant to mildew and rust if you guys have that problem. And this would also be one that would be perfect in containers. Just really beautiful rose. So this is the one that I'm really excited about. I just, I love that color so much. And then I have a geranium here, which I'm normally not a fan of geraniums, but I'm giving them a try. So I found this one. This one was like $5. I just thought that like bright pink. I'm like, okay, this will add some color to the garden. I just don't love the smell of geraniums. I think that they all smell awful. I think there's some really pretty ones. It's really hard for me to get past the smell. So I found this one, bright pink. We'll see how it goes. I can't guarantee I'm going to keep it in the garden because it, the smell is just something that's so hard for me. And then I've got this Angel Wing Senecio. Um, <laughs> I had a flower petal that started to decay on it. So I've got this and I've had terrible luck with them, but I'm gonna give it another try. I just thought it was really pretty. I thought the icy color in here, I'm trying to add more like a variance of things. So we'll see, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But I just, I love the way they look. I think they're so pretty. They're supposed to be more drought tolerant. So I think I'm gonna plant it closer towards the border of the bed and they do want full sun. So we'll see, I think my biggest problem has been that I always gave it too much water. To me, I think lamb's ear, and I know lamb's ear likes water, but realistically, the um, like softness that's on these like petals here, or these leaves right here, is supposed to help with water retention. So it, it should do fine. It should do fine with less water. Giving things less water is a problem for me. I tend to overwater. So let's bring these three back here and get them planted. I cannot wait to see this bloom.
that looks about a million times better. I mean, maybe not a million, but it definitely looks better and I am happy with it. I can't wait. I need to go inside and order the trellis to go right here. I'll hop over on the other side of the property to show you what I'm talking about. But this should fill this entire corner out. This rose, I'm expecting these two, the hydrangea and the rose, to like get to each other, which would be so weird to have like a shade plant right next to a full sun plant. But this is full sun right here, and then right there is shade. So it should work. I can't wait to see this grow up. I can't wait to see it bloom. I love that color. And then we've got the geranium right there. We'll see as I was planting it, the smell repulsed me. <laughs> but I like the color. I love the pop of color. And I realized like, as I'm saying, I wanted to add color here. This is really the only color that I added. Like everything else is still very neutral. <laughs> it's fine though. I mean, it looks good. I love it. I'm thinking maybe like a clematis growing up of this. I think that that would be really beautiful. And then I want to get maybe some type of, I don't even know what, but something full of grass. Something, is that Brent? Oh. Hi, Brent. <laughs> I want to get something there, though. Take that grass out. Something that's got a little bit of color. No clue what. It needs to be small, still beautiful, and can handle shade. Because that is a full shade area right there. But I'm loving how this is coming together. And I'm really loving the extra space that we have in this bed now. And did you guys see this? I didn't even know that this was down there. It's like a concrete block. I have no clue why it was down there. Super weird, but it was down there. So, I mean, it came out pretty easy. Once I hit it, I was like, oh no, this is gonna be so bad. What is that? What is going on? And it was just a block. <laughs> so it came out. I don't know what it's to or why it was there, but um, I, I don't even know what to do with it. I don't want it. <laughs> So we'll see. I think it's gonna like go in the garbage. I think I don't. I don't know. What do I do with blocks? Whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that was down there. Super weird. But either way, I'm happy with this area. I want to show you guys close up of this hydrangea though, because this is a beautiful hydrangea, and I can't wait for it to bloom. It's more like a lace cap type hydrangea instead of like a full hydrangea. But I'm I'm mostly growing. I'm growing it for the blooms, but also the stems. You guys know black is like one of my favorite colors black hoodie, black rain jacket, like, I just, I'm always in black shorts, black is one of my favorites, I mean, the fence, come on, so this hydrangea has black stems, it blooms on new and on old wood, so you can prune it whenever you need to prune it, should deer eat it back, it's fine, the stems do get a little woody um, when they're old growth, and so the, the old growth doesn't stay black, so if you want those black fresh stems, you gotta Make sure you cut it back. So let me show you guys this. Look at those stems. They're so pretty. They're so dark. And then it's got these white lacy blooms and it's just gorgeous. You got black stems, green foliar growth, and then the white blooms. This is the Seaside Serenade Glacier Bay from Monrovia Hydrangea. This is their seaside collection and it's really, really pretty. They have another one in their collection and it's called Martha's Vineyard and it's just, it's so pretty. So I would like to get my hands on that one too, but I don't know where I would even grow it. I don't have room for hydrangeas and they don't always perform well for us. This one so far has done really well. Um, it's actually, it's been, it's been great. It's the best growing and the best shaped one that we have on the property. Let's, let's go look at the trellis on the side yard though. <laughs> So this is the trellis I wanna add. And sorry for the sounds over here, the heater is going. But we already have one of them and I'm growing this evergreen clematis up it. And I like how airy it is at the bottom and I'm expecting it to stay nice and full and kind of cover all these like, these wires and everything in the lights so that we just have a nice soft glow. And I wanna train it to kind of go up and over. But I love this. It's so pretty, and I think this would tie into the espalier really nicely over there. I bought this one off of Lowe's. I wanna say it was like a hundred bucks or something like that, um, which I don't think was a bad deal. I'd seen it on other places, and it was way more expensive. So I think I'm gonna order another one of these, and I think that that'll make it so that it ties the side yard into the other side yard, and it just kind of all goes together this way. So I feel like we got some stuff done today. I'm gonna take it as a win, even though it was raining and I wasn't expecting this rain on this forecast. I mean, you can see I'm kind of wet. It's not like super rainy right now, but it is definitely rainy. I need to tie this up. It's basically reaching the ground. Oh my gosh. This clematis grows so fast. This has been in the ground for one year. <laughs> it's so fast. Um, I feel like we got a lot done though. Really happy with it. 
uh, it's coming together. The property's coming together. I'm making progress. This is slow gardening. This is real life gardening. This is, I got three plants in the ground and I didn't kill my seedlings today. We're taking it as a win. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming along with me. Bye guys.